SliceofSciFi.com. Hey Slicers, it's Brian here with a special report. I'm sitting here with director Joe Pearson and writer David Abramowitz of the animated, the 3D animated feature film War of the Worlds Goliath, which I want to start off by congratulating you guys on winning best 3D animated feature film at the Los Angeles 3D Film Festival. That must have felt amazing. And you were up against some serious competition with Paranorman and Madagascar 3. Can you tell me how does it feel to be such a successful 3D movie after working on it for so many years? Well, it's really gratifying. Um, I want to thank the people at the festival for giving us that kind of respect. I think a lot of it was because we were the only truly independent film at the festival. You know, we weren't a Disney or a, a DreamWorks or a Leica studio, but, but also I think War of the Worlds Goliath was a little different from the other films. It's a CG animated war movie really for teenagers and adults. And I think the fact that we had really good 3D animation and a, and a very original approach to production, that's why they gave us the award. It makes me believe that miracles do happen. You know, it was, um, it's very exciting. Um, the movie um, was beyond our expectations, I think. I think it turned out to be a visual treat, and um, and I wrote the script. So when you when the writer says it's a visual treat and doesn't say it's the writing schmuck, um, it is. Um, it's quite it's 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 quite a compliment. Um, the the movie is stunning visually. Um, the the artwork, the three D animation, um, and the sound effects and music are the equivalent of a major feature at a major studio. So we're very proud of it. Today, at 11 a.m. in Sarajevo, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. The Balkans are about to go to hell. Countries mobilizing against each other. Unless we are united, mankind is done for. Martians. It's been 15 years since the first invasion. Are we ready, sir? I won't allow myself to believe anything else. Europe's about to explode and take England with it. We either make our move when it does, or we'll never be free. The fools in Europe would rather be there to fight each other than the Martians. And this wasn't initially a feature-length movie. Um, it started off as a short. So how did you guys... Um... Actually, it started out... Um, originally, the thought was to do three um, half-hour pieces and then when I got into breaking up the story that could be cut into separate pieces and that's always hard so, so they would play perhaps in, on TV but that's very difficult to do in reality when you're doing an arc because the, the structure is very different um, so we talked and we decided to do it as a, um, a standalone a directed standalone video movie, movie. And, and, and then it, it started looking so good that um, Joe and Leon jumped off the cliff and said, let's do it as a feature. And not knowing anything about animation, I said, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, at what point did you want to make it a 3D feature? Well, about two years ago when we were looking at the footage coming in and it looked very strong, uh, we were watching the DVD market collapse. And that was our original model was to go to direct to video. I mean, who does a teen adult animated war movie, you know, theatrically? But we looked at the footage, it looked good, and we knew we could get international theatrical at least. And then 3D was coming on strong and the footage really lent itself to 3D, so we decided to just go for the gusto. <laughs> and the 3D company that was used um, in Malaysia was, was incredible. Um, it looks seamlessly like a major studio 3D movie. It's a wonderful piece of work. So this being a multinational project, um, how did everyone come together and work so seamlessly to get this project done? Well, it wasn't easy. Um, I've, I've been doing TV animation and music videos, commercials and shorts for the last 25 years out of LA. And most TV animation in LA is done overseas. The pre-production is done here in Los Angeles, but the actual hard work, the heavy lifting is done in Korea or Japan and now China, sometimes India. So I knew going into this on our modest budget, we would have to do 
a variation of that model. As I said, I was lucky that we had such a terrific team of pre-production artists and post-production artists in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and then the secret really was finding the right team in Korea to do the animation itself. And we worked with Sunmin Image Pictures and director Song, whom I've done numerous TV series and music videos with, because I knew they were a dependable team. They were artist run and artist oriented. And uh, we basically, we would do the storyboards and designs in Malaysia and LA, and then we'd ship all that to Korea, including the digital models which we build in Malaysia and they would skin the models in Malaysia, in, in Korea, and then composite that with the 2D character animation and layout, and then add layers of effects and after effects on top of all of that, and then send us the files. Now, I am a huge fan of steampunk, and I absolutely love the weapons in this movie. What did it take for you guys to come up with such unique ideas for the weaponry and technology. I mean, did you just dream it up or was it like uh, research into actual weapons? Well, we did travel back to an alternate past and took some photos. Uh, no, really, it's just, <laughs> you know, if you, if you are a history, I was a history major before I was an art major and, and uh, you know, I've been wor a working artist for 30 years. So I kind of put everything into the film that I thought would look cool, you know, Zeppelins and the tripod concept from the original novel, you know, sets up a certain design pattern. And our thinking was, how would humans adapt that kind of technology, right? Would we build bipedal tanks? No, we'd probably build tripedal tanks. Actually, we'd probably build bipeds, <laughs> but the tripods look so cool. Oh, you know, absolutely. We went for <laughs> and if you look at the tanks and the, and the technology in the film, they really are pretty advanced for a, even a steampunk, you know, story. They're almost, uh, some people would say, are diesel punk in design. But again, that was more an aesthetic choice because they looked cool, you know, to really push, to push, to make them as strong and, and uh, aggressive looking as we could. And then you look at the airplanes. Um, you, you look at the Red Baron's airplane. It is so cool. It is, it is, and you take, you take um, an airplane like that that runs with propellers, give it a jet assist, <laughs> and give it a heat ray, and it becomes a hell of a weapon. <laughs> Who will fight with me? I think what's one of the things that's really cool in the movie is we take real historical characters and place them in the midst of our movie. Um, there's not a better Secretary of War than Teddy Roosevelt. You know, he's just perfect for the play. And, and, um, and Nikola Tesla as the mad scientist who, who engineers, re-engineers the Mart Martian technology. And to be in charge of the Air Force is to have the Red Baron, Baron von Richthofen, the greatest German ace in World War I that doesn't happen because the Martians invade. So it's just, it's an interesting mix of, of reality, of real, con real characters, and places them in conditions that are, so, um, that are so incredible. And it's the fight for humanity to survive. I think one of, the, one of the aesthetics I told the design team was to kind of think of 1914 meets 1930 meets Star Wars. <laughs> you know, so because I, I wanted, in our New York scenes, we have a lot of really great kind of deco buildings. Heck, we have the, our version of the Empire State Building, which wasn't built until much later than 1914. But I feel like in this alternate history, you know, everything's been pushed and accelerated. And there's a monorail instead of a subway, you know? So why New York City? Was it just because it's so architecturally pleasing or? Yeah, I mean, I think New York is in many ways the center of the world. It still is, you know. I mean, I, I'm a lifelong Angelino, but I think if you have to pick a great city, New York would be the place to go. If you were going to create a, a, an allied army to fight the Martians, you'd base it in New York. Turning the film into a, a 3D movie, does that change how you tell the story? Well, it doesn't change how, it can change how you tell the story, but we were fortunate enough that when I was directing this to utilize the CG vehicles to their optimal uh, impact on the screen, I created a fair amount of 3D friendly scenes. You know, we have a shot 
in the film, it'll be coming up in a few minutes, where you actually travel down along the bottom of the super zeppelin as tripods are loaded up into the zeppelin, right? And then you pull back, and you go around the nose of the zeppelin, then you zoom in along the top structure and right into the control room. And that's Very a cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's a great shot in 3D, but it was never intended to be 3D. It's just, you know, fortunate that that worked approach out that worked well. what I wanted to do, yeah. And the way we did the 3D conversion was, was aided by the fact that all of the work done in Korea, the animation, the layers, and the composites are done on maybe, uh, in some scenes we have up to 16 layers in one shot, wow. with foreground, background, mid-ground, multiple layers of character, multiple layers of effects. So we got the Koreans to give all of those layers to us as individual files. So we had that to begin with. We could break down, half the 3D process was, was given to us by getting the layers out of Korea. But then after that, it became much more difficult. We had to take individual characters' faces, put like a CG frame around them, and actually warp the camera around the, the face to create you know, foreground and background <laughs> depth. It's subtle, that it's, but it's all there. That was the same process they used in The Lion King. And they use in live action conversion. They do a mat around it. So we, we took six months to do the 3D conversion, even with the layers already in hand. Oh, man. So you, uh, you studied a lot of other 3D movies to see what their technique was to adapt to your own. Is that correct? Yes, we looked at Lion King and, and, and of course, Avatar and uh, Hugo. Actually, Hugo, I think, is probably the greatest 3D film I've ever seen. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's really, really pushed 3D, though. We opted to be more subtle, uh, more like Avatar or, or The Lion King in our use of 3D. So you've, um, you've already taken over Los Angeles 3D Film Festival. Where do you see this film going in uh, the future? Well, we would love to see a theatrical release in L.A. and in the States, but, you know, it's a small-budget film. It's an animated teen adult war movie, so we'll see. We're talking to distributors, and uh, we're, we know the audience is out there. We know you're out there. You know, it's just convincing the distributor of that and <coughs> finding the distributor that knows how to get it out to the right audience. And in a few days, it'll be playing at the Citrus um, Science Fiction Festival in Citrus, Spain. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to seeing how that plays there. <laughs> so you're having a, you have a pretty wide international audience that you're hoping to capture. Absolutely. Um, this is an international movie with characters from all over the world. Um, and we're hoping it, it has a broad scale appeal. Um, and it's not an American movie. It's not a French movie. It's not a German movie. It's a movie about the entire world. Has it released in Malaysia yet? November 15th. Ah, so it's coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a full widescreen release in, in Malaysia and Indonesia on the 15th, and in 3D in the theaters. And hopefully we'll be there to see that. That's, we'll know in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's very awesome. Well, I thank you guys very much for this interview. Joe, David. Pleasure. Thank you. And I'm Brian for Slice of Sci-Fi Special Report. I'll catch you guys next time. SliceofSciFi.com